Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome back to the first in our series of PVP battle recaps as a part of the Blast Burn Radio Nuzlocke World Tour. I am Jolly by Nature and today in this match, I am facing off against our co-host Celeste Lost. Now Celeste, coming into this match, Celeste was definitely the opponent that I was the most scared of. And I was the most scared of Celeste specifically because of the Eggmon that she managed to pull at the end of the week, which was a Skarmory at week one. At level 12, she has a Skarmory, which is a problem. Um, so every strategy I had coming into this match was 100% strategizing around how do I negate that Skarmory, at least as much as is humanly possible. And I knew coming in that my success or, or lack thereof was going to be highly dependent on whether I could accomplish that goal. Uh, so let's uh, let's see how that works out for us. So as you can see, uh, these are the five mon that we we bring into PvP this week. We've got uh, we've got we got Optimus, the Ponyard, uh, Wellington, the uh, Vivian, T Bone, the Meryl, Takito, our Chespin, and Baloney, our Bidoof. Um, now we we ultimately led with Wellington. Uh, the, the Vivian, as you can see, I, I think we're currently still stalling for time a little bit. There we go. Okay. Sorry, it's been a while since we actually recorded these. Um, yeah, so Celeste has uh, Brad, her Pikachu. She has her her Dunsparce, her Froakie, her Skarmory, uh, and her Bidoof. Um, so ultimately, we are going to lead with Wellington, our Vivian, uh, hoping against hope that Celeste is going to make a goof and lead with her Skarmory, try to set up Stealth Rocks turn one, and, and we can paralyze it, um, which is, is really, like, kind of key, because the, the key to victory here for me is to get the Skarmory as weakened as I can and preserve our Ponyard Optimus until the end of the game so that... It, it can't whirlwind me out, and, and I can try to deal damage with Sucker Punch, which is basically my only means of dealing neutral damage to the Skarmory in the world. Uh, I, I, this isn't a great plan. It's got a lot of holes in it. S Celeste can counteract it pretty quickly if she knows what she's doing. I'm just going to kind of hope for her to misplay. And in this case, she does not. She leads with Brad, her Pikachu, which both drastically threatens Wellington, uh, as well as being immune to paralysis. So this is not great. We need to GTFO. Um, so we're going to swap into Takito, our uh, our chestman real quick to immune, or not immune, but to resist out that electric attack. And we take it pretty well. Um, we don't take a, a huge chunk of damage there. Um, now, obviously, the, the Pikachu is always something of a problem uh, because it has uh, static, but but thankfully it, it swaps out and into that Skarmory, uh, which is why we clicked fight. Actually, we were going for the neutral attack, so if the Skarmory came in, we would do some damage, and boy, that sure is some damage we just did. Uh, not what we were hoping for on that particular turn. Now, with this being chapter one, we only had one held item really kind of worth writing home about, and that was on T-Bone. That's our choice band, which is really important. Uh, T-Bone, our Meryl, has rollout, and so we have the option of going for choice band rollout. And again, if Celeste goofs up and lets it go for too many turns, it's going to start to really add up in damage. Uh, in this case, we went into Baloney the Badoof, who who is really only good for death fodder in this match, uh, but notably... Baloney can growl. Um, Starscream, that, that Skarmory, does have Brave Bird, and for like level 12 Pokemon stats, has a really respectable attack stat. Um, so lowering it with Growl is is actually kind of valuable, and, and it's going to help my Pokemon that can hopefully hit the thing even a little bit last more turns on the field with it. Um, again, like Skarmory is the final boss here. We have to beat this goddamn Murder Pterodactyl, or we cannot win. Uh, it does whirlwind out Maloney, which is fine. We, we go into T-Bone, and we're just going to go for a rollout here. Yeah, cool. Yes, baby, tomorrow morning is school. Thank you. Okay. And as you can see, despite the choice band and the critical hit rollout, on, on turn one at least does nothing. We really needed to roll for a couple of uh, turns before it's going to do literally anything. Uh, drags out Wellington, which... At this point, there's no point in swapping out because Stealth Rocks are on the field. As you can see, I take about half health from Rocks. 
because of the way the HP stats line up, I could go out and back in one more time on one HP, but it's just, it's worthwhile to just go for the Sun Spore. Uh, but unfortunately, Celeste is a little bit too smart for that and goes out into Brad the Pikachu to immune out the Sun Spore. But at this point, there, there's very, there's very little chance it, in Celeste getting caught off guard by that particular tech, um, particularly because um, she, she already has it. And, and I only have so many chances, right? She's shown that she's aware of the Stun Spore. We're not going to get it off. Uh, it's not worth switching out and taking half the health on switch in again. So we stay in and go for the struggle bug. And it's kind of a good thing we did because Brad went for, for play nice, hoping to catch us on a switch. And we were able to deal half of his health and punish that prediction. Uh, not going to go for that mistake again, however, and goes for the Thundershock, taking Wellington down almost all the way, but Wellington kind of earning his stripes today, hangs on, struggle bugs again, and we KO the Pikachu. So we managed to KO one thing in this match. Good job, Wellington. Out's going to come Jamak the Froki, which were probably faster than at this point, but unfortunately, Froki gets quick attack, uh, and that's going to be enough to finish off. Finish off beef. Good job, beef. You did you did good work. And we're gonna go out once again into T-Bone, um, thinking that one of two things is gonna happen here, right? Either either Celeste is going to stay in and I'm gonna get like a couple of turns rollout off before this Froki goes down, or she's gonna hard into her Skarmory and I'm gonna get at least two turns of rollout in. Um, so that was definitely, I think, the best plan at this point. She does hard out into the Skarmory. We get our turn one rollout. Again, not even, I think, more damage than the Leftovers is doing, but the, the next turn it's going to double, um, which is really, really good. And, and T-Bone should be able to live one Brave Bird, and certainly if she goes for the Whirlwind, it goes last. So we're going to get another rollout off. And we're starting to do damage, like real damage. That was a crit, mind you. Another crit. Uh, but that was actually like, we hurt that thing a little bit, um, but we do get whirlwinded out into Takedo, um, which puts me in a really rough spot because like I can stay in and bite, but bite isn't doing very much and I'm very susceptible to that brave bird. Uh, but at this point, I don't really feel like there's a lot, a lot that I can accomplish by switching. So I just stay in and go for, for bite. And again, Celeste must have been anticipating a swap there. Uh, goes for the uh, assurance. I'm not sure who assurance would have been a good guard against swapping on, though. Uh, unless she's just preserving her own HP from, from Brave Bird recoil, I suppose. Which is certainly possible. Um, we, we stay in and go for another bite. And now she goes for the Brave Bird, and with Brad or with uh, Takedo already being at about half health, I, I believe that's going to be yep, that's going to be enough. Uh, and down goes our sweet baby Chespin. And I don't actually remember who we go into here. I think it's I think it's Baloney. Yep, we go into Baloney here. Um, again, we're getting down towards that end game where we really want to lean into Ponyard. And as such, we need to do everything we can to support it. Uh, it it's very long odds of beating the Scarberry. Um, so we go in and we just growl. We, we just start clicking growl. Again, Celeste going for assurance here, almost certainly saving her own HP from the, the Brave Bird recoil, which is frankly smart at this point. There's very little I can do to really hurt her Skarmory. Um, so preserving its HP, I think, is almost unquestionably the play. And she goes for the Whirlwind. So we did get two Growls off, and she is going to Whirlwind out T-Bone the Merrill. And this is about as great of an opportunity to click Rollout as I think we are ever going to get. Um, again, we're, we're guaranteed to get at least one roll. Um, and, and more if she misplays. So we're just going to go for it. And anytime T-Bone hits the field, we're clicking Rollout in this match. And she goes right for the Whirlwind, and goodbye T-Bone. Out comes Baloney again. And see, the problem is because we can't exert offensive pressure, like, Starscream is just getting healthier. <laughs> we, we can't, we've only got one thing that can hit it, and, and unfortunately, if we just bring it out, 
it's just going to whirlwind, which means we can't hit it. <laughs> uh, because Sucker Punch is the only move we have to hit it. We need it to offensively attack. Okay, so Jamak the Froakie comes out and absorbs the Growl. I think Celeste's starting to, to get wise to what I'm after here. It goes for a lick, uh, which I, I genuinely don't know what the thought process there was. Obviously, Baloney is immune, but even regardless, Lick not exactly a stellar move to use against Meryl or Ponyard. Um, I, I mean, I guess fishing for paralysis, maybe, but uh, that doesn't feel necessary with where Celeste is in the match. Uh, she comes out of Jamak and goes into Greta the Dunsparce, um, which... <laughs> is actually kind of a problem this week because it's it's a one-stage Pokemon at level 12. Uh, which, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. And it's going to go for a rollout all its own, uh, which is a problem because, like, I, as I know very well, because my strategies largely depend on it, I can't outpace rollout with Growl, but also Baloney's not really good for much else. Uh, and now, finally, blessedly, goes down. Rest in peace, Baloney. You did your job. So at this point, unfortunately, I'm kind of forced back into Optimus, right? Because T-Bone is not going to be able to handle this Dunsparce out on turn three of rollout before it gets going. And that's basically the death knell of, of my strategy at this point. Like, I can't... I can't keep Ponyard healthy enough to deal with the Skarmory, even maybe while also dealing with the Stun Spars. And I'm torn here between Headbutt and Sucker Punch. I ultimately go for Headbutt, thinking I should be faster and can maybe get a flinch off, which would be huge here. Unfortunately, I do not, and I have to eat that turn three rollout, which, despite resistance, still does a little chunk of damage. Um, we're going to go back to the Headbutt. Again, we're fishing for flinches at this point. And the turn four rollout goes off as well. So no lucky flinch. And that was a huge crit. Um, honestly, that crit probably mattered, although I don't think I was winning this particular battle anyway. Now we go for the Sucker Punch, hoping that we've made up the difference that it can just finish Greta off. And it doesn't. And Greta is able to, to clean up Optimus. So now we're down to just T-Bone our poor Meryl, and, and at this point the writing is on the wall, folks. Uh, I don't think there's any way your boy is going to pull this one off. Uh, we bring T-Bone out, who's already at about half health, and we do the only thing that T-Bone does this week. We click on rollout. And then maybe the ultimate sign of disrespect, Celeste does not let me finish off the Dunsparce and instead goes back into that asshole Skarmory, the Starscream. Uh, and we miss the rollout too, which is just great. It's just fantastic. We click it again. What else are we going to do? Literally, we have a choice band on uh, and, and the Skarmory outspeeds and, and does go for that brave bird. And that's going to be all she wrote. Um, so congratulations to Celeste on her week one victory. I, I don't think there was any really, really reasonable way that that match was ever going to go any other way. Uh, but I at least did my best to, uh, to make you guys proud and, and make the best showing I possibly could of it. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned and we will jump into our second week one battle. All right, we are back. Uh, this time tasting off against Anna and this is, if anything, the polar opposite of our Chapter 1 match against Celeste. Anna, poor Anna, overleveled on almost everything on her team and only had two usable mods to bring into PvP. Uh, her Vivian and her Aerodactyl, as you can see on the screen. And perhaps more importantly, uh, that Aerodactyl was an Eggmon uh, given by uh, Roger M in the community. Uh, shout out to Roger. A and Roger has a sense of humor and gave it no offensive moves. Uh, so the only mon that she has that can offensively attack is a bug flying mon that is quad weak to rock when half of my team uses rollout. I did my best to make it as fast as I possibly could. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and get into it. So the plan here is to lead with uh, Optimus, our, our Ponyard, and set Stealth Rocks on turn one. 
which in hindsight I actually kind of regret doing because if I had not done that against Anna where I really didn't need to, my opponents wouldn't actually know I have access to Stealth Rocks. I, I didn't need to expose that chapter one. That was kind of a rookie mistake, uh, but here we are. Um, but, but the thought process being that I could uh, just kind of discourage swaps and, and make it go quicker, hopefully. Um, so we lead out with Optimus against uh, Carmelite, the Aerodactyl. And we just go for a quick stealth rock on turn one. Excuse me. So, Carmelite's clicking buttons. Those buttons don't super matter. It can't functionally do anything. We get our stealth rocks up, uh, and we're going to hard swap into T-Bone so that we can start rolling out. And, and in theory, by the time the rollout's over, so will be Anna's team. So we hard swap into T-Bone as Anna goes for, I believe, did she start cursing? No, Tailwind's his turn. Gets the Tailwind up. Now, now going much faster. Very important. And we're going to go for rollout. And now, now Carmelite starts cursing, um, which, if anything, is a little frustrating because she's boosting her defense, making making this go a little longer. It's not going to change anything, but like, what is she supposed to do? Right? Uh, that's just kind of that's the hand that she's got. Uh, and so she's going to go for curse. We're going to go for rollout. And sooner or later, one of those is going to win. Now at plus two attack, plus two defense, minus two speed with Tailwind, so neutral speed on an Aerodactyl, one of the fastest Pokemon in existence. This is still imminently faster than anything I have on the field, but also still unable to attack. Uh, now it's at plus three, plus three. But again, rollout doubles every turn, so can't can't keep up. There we go. Down goes Carmel. And I'm pretty sure the Tailwind's about to wear off, too. Yep. <laughs> Not that it matters, because Vivian is also going to be immediately faster. Here comes Obsession. The Vivian takes half health on switch in from rocks. It's going to go for Stun Spore. And we go for rollout, and that's that. <laughs> so yeah, guys, uh, we end the week one and one, which isn't ideal, but is frankly where I kind of expected to be. Um, I, I knew that there was was no reasonable way that we were going to beat uh, Celeste, and I knew that there was no reasonable way that Anna was going to beat us. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope that you guys enjoyed that, and I hope that you're looking forward to uh, an absolutely jam-packed chapter of Blast Burn Radio action as we head into chapter two and face uh, Grant in the Silage City Gym. Um, and yeah, we'll be back for PvP again next week with doubles, so you can look forward to that. But that's going to be it for today, guys. As always, I have been Jolly by Nature. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Hey, what's up, everybody? You made it to the end of the video. That is so awesome. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Um, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons so you stay up to date on what I and my co-hosts are doing right here on the Blast Burn Radio YouTube page. Also, be sure to check out Blast Burn Radio podcast, which is available wherever fine pods are casted, as well as at our website down below at BlastBurnRadio.com. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back next time, and I hope to see you there. Take care.